week three on the road has been uh, <laughs> a lot of Russia. I'd say I've uh, pretty much had enough of Russia now. I'm sure it's got its charm, but when you're riding 16 hours a day on these roads, I mean, look at the traffic. It's nuts. Maintaining 240 miles, for us more the focus is he starts at 4 o'clock, he doesn't ride later than 9.30. It's been tough. It's been rain, it's been cold at times. Yeah, the, I mean the story of Russia is really just these insane horizons. Just, it's just a vast country. It's busy, you know, lots of towns, lots of traffic, uh, lots of trucks and um, lots of roadworks, which is pretty, pretty tough going on the bike. You know, it doesn't stop me riding the bike, but those roads are pretty punishing. Three weeks into the um, Mark's ride, or more than a quarter of the way around the world, the bike's covered 4,600 miles. Um, it's come a long way, it's had a lot of hard use, like near constant use. But we've kept on top of the bike, we've kept it clean, we've kept particularly the drive chain clean. Mark's also had I think four punctures, which is sort of fairly reasonable in that in this distance, and the, and the punctures have all been from well, three of them from tiny shards of glass, and actually one of them from a really sharp little shard of stone that was right in the middle of the tread. And all four of them have been on the back wheel. It's been taking a lot of abuse, but other than the chain and the and the uh, rear tire, there's been no problems with it whatsoever. The bike's been faultless. For a couple of days it was getting pretty sore behind my uh, right knee. Laura noticed on the sole of my shoe that there was a rub. Um, you know, there shouldn't be any contact between the pedal and the, the base of the shoe like that. It should all be on the cleat. I think what happened was, you know, week one I was pedaling fine, week two I crashed and was just pedaling strangely, you know, putting a huge amount of weight on the right hand side. Alex changed the pedals, immediately felt like my leg was spinning easier. But Mark ticks away at sort of you know, he sticks to his pace and stuff, and that's the key thing. It's just about keeping in the time frames around our rest stops and, um, and yeah, and, and him looking after himself and keeping consistent on the bike and not going too hard into a hill or pushing too hard against the headwind. Like, yeah, the mileage is just ticking over and he's doing excess because he's comfortable, not because he's, he's incre increasing his power output or anything like that and trying to push more. So, yeah, in that sense, it's not necessarily that we're really trying to push every day for 240. He does what he does within the time frame that he's got. And if we meet the 240 plus, then that's a, yeah, we're on target and that's a bonus. To get a quarter way around the world ahead of target, 240 miles in the bag every single day. In fact, sitting at an average of about 244 miles a day to ride really consistently. You know, to absolutely nail that target every day. Every day is so massive, you know, you don't, you can't think beyond it, really. We can see that this is a workable plan. We can see that this is absolutely, you know, A, it's rational, B, I've got a phenomenal team around me, C, and kind of, quite importantly, physically and mentally, I've got the ability. Uh, we just need to stay consistent about what we're doing. But that sort of big question mark hanging over my head is kind of gone now. Don't try and, um... Don't try and beat the headwind, just 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 do the hours on the bike and sure you need to put a bit more effort in, you know, my watts are higher than they would normally be. But um, you know, I've had such a good run with the weather over the first couple of weeks. Um, it's gotta it's gotta change somewhere. I hope on average it can be tailwinds and I've already proven that I can do the miles when that's the some open sections it's um, yeah, you're pretty exposed to the elements. Um, but it is it's good mentally to know that if I just don't try and fight it, just just sit steady on the bike and do the hours. I, I don't actually lose that much time. When you ride 16 hours, I mean, Russia has just thrown everything at us. Um, and it's gone on forever. That certainly has. And I think when we get into Mongolia, you'll see such a cultural change, it'll really give you a lift. Yeah. Uh, the, the terrain is, is utterly different from this. Yeah. You'll get the rolling hills into the steppe <clears throat> and then into the Gobi Desert. Uh, but on the backdrop of all that, you've got this fantastic, unique culture and a way of life that is truly nomadic and ancient as well. Yeah. So hopefully it'll give you a lift as you, as you head south. It's amazing, even though I'm not getting off the bike and obviously seeing the culture in any meaningful sense, I, I am, you know, seeing it at the speed of a bike. So it's amazing to see every day the changing houses, the yeah. changing people. You know, I can even see, you know, yeah. the, the people's faces and lifestyles and uh, industry, um, you know, because this is three weeks, 21 days. It's also late, so I'm going to hit my hit the hay. <laughs> well done, mate. Cheers. Yeah.